good morning students so this is my second lecture on the poem the brook by alfred tenson so in today's class what we are going to discuss uh, that in our previous class we have already discussed about the life of the poet okay and also the ideas the themes contained in the poem and according to the theme we divided the poem in our previous class we divided discussed about the divisions in the poem now in today's class we are going to discuss about the poetic techniques the poetic devices that are used in the poem okay as and also i am going to give you the note about the poet that is given in your textbook as well as i am going to give you the text of the poem and then i am going to give you the word meaning word notes that are given in your textbook and some extra word meaning and finally i am to i am going to give you some objective type questions okay but before going to start my class today let me uh, make one thing clear that in my previous class uh, while typing i made two mistakes one mistake was that i have to write that uh, tennyson completed his school education in 1828 instead of that i have typed as Uh, 1928 second is that uh, tennyson became the poet laureate of england in 1850 instead of that i typed 1950 those were the two mistakes um, i made in my previous class okay now let us come to the poetic devices used in the poem the first poetic device that is used in the poem the brook is a very familiar a common poetic device that is used by most of the poems and all of you are familiar with that poetic device or poetic technique that is personification now what is personification personification means attributing human qualities to the inanimate objects of nature so some when some human qualities are given to the objects of nature or to the non living things those then that is called personification and in the case of this poem the entire poem is an example of personification why because in the poem the brook itself is the speaker like a human being the brook narrates its journey okay so as it can narrate it can speak so that quality of human being has been imparted on the brook so that is why we can say that the whole poem is an example of personification the second type of poetic device that is used in the poem is alliteration now again it is a familiar poetic device all of you know about this poetic device alliteration means the repetition of the same consonant sound at the, at the beginning of two or more words immediately succeeding each other or at short intervals so that is called alliteration so the repetition of the same consonant sound in two consecutive words in the poem in the first stanza you will find uh, sudden sally that is an example of alliteration so so that sound is repeated then in the second stanza 20 thorps 20 thorps that to, to um, pronunciation or sound has been repeated so that is an example of alliteration the third common poetic device that is used in the poem is onomatopoeia what is onomatopoeia onomatopoeia means the sound words that means the words which in include sounds that are similar to the noise they refer to that means the sound words are known as onomatopoeia for example hissing buzzing those are the onomatopoeias the sound words so these are the three first three poetic devices used in the poem and these are common poetic devices all of you are familiar with that with these poetic devices but there are four more poetic devices used in the poem and i think those four poetic devices are new to you in the next slide we are going to discuss about those poetic four poetic devices okay in this slide you will come across the four poetic devices last four poetic devices the first one is anaphora now what is anaphora 
Anaphora is a poetic device that involves the repetition of a word or group of words in successive sentences or clauses. When one word is repeated in two consecutive uh, sentences or clauses, that is known as anaphora. For example, look at the first stanza of the poem. In the first stanza of the poem, at the very first line, the word I is there. In the second line, again, the word I is repeated. That is an example of anaphora. Again, in stanza number two, the word by in the first line, then in the third line, again, the word by is used. That is an example of anaphora. Then, next one is antithesis. Antithesis means when two opposite ideas, two contrasting words are juxtaposed or put together. That is called antithesis. And one anti many antitheses are, are used in the poem. For example, look at the third line of the uh, third stanza of the poem, third stanza, third line, that is, men may come and men may go. Here, come and go. These two opposite words are juxtaposed. So that is why it is an example of what? Example of antithesis. What is antithesis? When two contrasting words are put together. Then the sixth one is asyndeton. Asyndeton, remember. Now, what is a syndeton? A syndeton is a poetic device where sometimes conjunctions or articles or even pronouns are omitted for the sake of speed and economy. That means to bring speed to the rhyme of the poem, to the rhythm of the poem, or to make the lines of the poem short you know, for economy, economy of uh, using words. What happens sometimes the poet, they deliberately omit some sometimes conjunctions articles or pronouns etc etc there is only one example of asyndeton in the entire poem for that you have to look at the, uh, stanza number 10 stanza number 10 the first line is i still um, sorry stanza number 11 not stanza number 10 stanza number 11 look at the first line i sleep i slide i gloom i glance Okay, actually it should be I sleep and I slide, I gloom and I glance. But to bring speed to the po rhyme of the poem, the poet here omitted the conjunction and this is called a syndeton. Okay, the next one is refrain. Now what is a refrain? Refrain means the lines repeated at a regular interval in a verse or a recurring theme is known as refrain. So the lines that are repeated in a poem at a regular interval that is called or a theme that is repeated in a poem regular at a regular interval is called uh, refrain and the example of refrain is look at the uh, last two lines of stanza number three for men may come and men may go but i go on forever then again look stanza number six last two lines for men may come and men may go but i go on forever same lines are repeated then look at stanza number line, last two lines, same lines, for men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. Finally, look at stanza number 13, again the same two lines are repeated, for men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. So these two lines are repeated at a regular interval, first thing. And one theme, one idea has been repeated in these two lines. What is that? These two lines refer to the transient human life and the permanence of nature. Okay, so these are the different poetic techniques or poetic devices used in the poem. Okay, now here I'm providing you the note about the poet that is given in your textbook. Okay, so here I have underlined certain important points. So you have to keep those things in mind. For example, you have to remember the year of birth of the poet as well as the year of death of the poet. Secondly, you have to remember the name of the group, intellectual group, in which Tennyson joined when he was in Cambridge University. When he was in Trinity College in Cambridge University, he joined a group that is the Apostles. Then you have to remember the name of the most popular work of Tennyson, that is In Memoriam, and that was an elegy, and it was written in the memory of Arthur Hallam. Now, what is an elegy? 
elegy is a poem where the poet laments or expresses his or her sorrow at the death of a near and dear one that is called an elegy then you have to remember the names of some of the significant or famous works of Sally, uh, sorry, um, 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 Tennyson. Those are the Stars of the Light Brigade. It's a very famous poem. Then more than other poems and idols of the king. Then you have to remember that he became the poet laureate in 1850. And finally, you have to remember that when Tennyson died at the age of 83, he was buried at Poet's Corner at Westminster's Abbey. So these are the things that you have to remember okay here i'm providing you the poem so please go through the poem slowly you may find difficult to understand it probably the literal meaning of the poem you'll be able to understand but there is a hidden meaning as you as i already mentioned earlier you'll be able to know that hidden meaning when i'll explain the poem but now first of all you have to go through the poem so there are 13 stanzas in the poem so please read the poem okay in this slide i'm providing you the word meaning that are given in the textbook and these word meanings are very very important why i say it so because if you go through the question papers that earlier came in the examination there you will find that many questions from the word note part and from the note about the poet part used to come in the examination particularly for one mark and two marks so that is why very carefully go through the notes the word notes that are given in the textbook and i am i am here providing those word notes because probably you may not have the textbook with you so that you can take help of these word notes okay thank you and now I am here providing some meaning of some words that are not given in the word note. Some extra word meaning here I am providing. For example, here farn, the meaning of the word farn has been given. That is in stanza number one. The word farn is in stanza number one. It's a small plant which says feathery leaves. And I have given one image here also. Then hurry down, stanza number two means to move swiftly. Sleep, stanza number two, that means to glide or to slide. Then chatter, stanza number four, that is informal talk or to make a series of short high pitch sound. Then pebbles means a small stone. Then fret, me, uh, fret means um, to devour. And then fairy means uh, it is a beautiful or lovely. So these are the... Uh, in this way, I have given you the meaning of 15 words here. Okay, these are the extra word meanings. Okay. Okay, now today I am giving you uh, 12 one mark questions from the things that we discussed in our these two classes. On the basis of those two, in these two classes, I have given you some questions here. I have given you 12 questions. So go through all these questions and then you will find the answers in the in these two classes that I have already taken. So uh, if still if you find any problem in finding out the answers of these questions, feel free to contact me. Okay? Personally, you can contact me in my WhatsApp number. So please contact me if you find any problem or if you find any problem in understanding the things that we discussed in these two lectures, then you can ask me. I shall try my best to uh, clear your doubts. Okay. So students, thank you for today and have a nice day.